miracle of the Quran. The Quran is the greatest miracle of God. And the and Quran, the Quran is, the is the proof of the truthfulness of Islam. Islam. And the Quran is the standing and everlasting miracle. But very rarely have we heard, how is it a miracle? The Quran is the ultimate miracle of our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It is such a miracle that all the other miracles are considered trivial and inconsequential compared to the Quran. Because the Quran is so powerful, so bright, so blinding that no matter how bright the other miracles are, when you have the sun, the stars become useless. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Our first speaker is Sheikh Yasser Qadi. Sheikh Yasser is a lecturer and Islamic orator who has authored several books about Islam. He's a popular speaker in many Muslim circles in the United States, Canada, UK, and Australia. He's one of the few people who has combined traditional seminary training with Western education. Born in Houston, Texas, USA, he went on to high school in Jeddah, Saudi Arabia and later on worked for Dow Chemical on a short stint. After that, he decided to pursue an education in Islamic studies at the Islamic University of Medina, Saudi Arabia. There he completed a second bachelor's degree specializing in Hadith studies and later on went on to complete his MA in Theology presently doing his PhD in Islamic studies at the Yale University in New Haven, Connecticut, USA. Apart from his studies, he's an active instructor in Al Maghrib Institute where he teaches theology, Sira, Tajweed and other topics. He gives regular Friday sermons and lectures. He appears on a number of international satellite TV channels, namely Islam Channel in UK, Huda TV in Saudi Arabia, Al Fajr channel in Egypt, and of course, Peace TV worldwide. To eulogize before us on this important topic, the miracle of the Quran, brothers and sisters, let's welcome the intellectual and well learned speaker of this afternoon, Sheikh Yasir Qadi. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. We begin by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and by sending salat and salams upon the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now as Muslims, we all know that the Quran is the greatest miracle of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have been taught this as children and we say it and boast of it to our non-Muslim friends. And we have heard many lectures by many eloquent speakers and many academics who keep on telling us the Quran is the greatest miracle of God. And the Quran is the proof of the truthfulness of Islam. And the Quran is the standing and everlasting miracle. But very rarely have we heard how is it a miracle? And what is the whole concept of this miracle? The purpose of today's talk is to elucidate on the very concept of God sending miracles and why and how is the Quran a miracle. Now the concept of miracles in Arabic is called a mu'jiza and a mu'jiza means that which cannot be imitated. A mu'jiza means that which cannot be done again. It is something that is supernatural that breaks the natural laws that we are accustomed to. It is an occurrence that is so profound, so deep, so unintelligible to the average human being that the only explanation that any rational person can come to is that this is a miracle from God himself. And the examples of this are many. In fact, every single prophet that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent was sent with miracles. So for example, 
the simplest examples is the Prophet Musa alayhi salam. The Prophet Musa alayhi salam, look at his miracles that Allah gave him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him nine miracles. Allah says in the Quran, tis'i ayat, nine miracles. And of these miracles was this staff that when Musa threw it, it becomes into a snake. This is not something that any human being could do. Of the miracles is the parting of the Red Sea. Now who can possibly hit the Red Sea with a staff and the Red Sea parts into two? This is something that is above and beyond the explanation of any human being. The Prophet Jesus Christ, the Prophet Isa ibn Maryam, he was given miracles upon miracles. His very birth was a miracle that has never ever been replicated to this day and it can never be replicated. His very birth from a virgin lady, his mother Maryam alayhi salam, this is a miracle. The fact that he predicted so many things that he told the people of Israel, he told the children of Israel, I will tell you what is in your houses right now. And he told them. The fact that he resurrected the dead before their very eyes, before their very eyes, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told him to call out such a person's name who had just been buried. And he called out his name and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought him back to life. He was clinically dead. He was completely dead. Not a false death that happens to this day. He was dead. His spirit had been taken away. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala returned his spirit to him and resurrected him back to life. Of his miracles, he created a pigeon from clay and he blew into it and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala caused life to be blown into the pigeon. And so from clay, Allah created life as he has created the life of man. These are what we call miracles. Now why does Allah send miracles? What is the purpose of sending miracles? The purpose of sending miracles is to prove that such and such a person is the messenger of God. This is the purpose of a miracle. The reason why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends miracles is to show mankind this person is not a liar. He is not a fraud. He is not a charlatan. He is indeed somebody whom I am helping. And I will prove this help to you in a manner that will beyond the shadow of a doubt manifest itself as being directly from God. And so when our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam came, the Quraysh also demanded miracles. They demanded miracles as well. And they said, why don't you cause the angels to come down? Why don't you split up the earth and cause rivers to flow in this barren land of Mecca? Why don't you make this desert into a green area? They wanted miracles. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them miracles. He gave them many miracles, but he gave them the ultimate miracle as well. And that is the miracle of the Quran. That is the miracle of the Quran. In five different verses, Allah issues a challenge. And these verses are called the verses of challenge. In five separate and distinct verses, Allah issues a challenge. And of these verses is Allah saying in the Quran, Say if mankind and the jinns came together in order to produce something similar to the Quran, they would not be able to produce it even if they helped one another. So in the first revelation, Allah says, bring forth a Quran similar to it. If you think this book is a fraud, this man is billah, a liar, why don't you do the same? This is a challenge. And they plotted and they planned and they could not meet up this challenge. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reduced the challenge. And he said, why don't you bring forth ashri suwarim muftarayat? Bring forth only 10 surahs, not the whole Quran. Why don't you bring forth 10 surahs that are fabricated and forged and see if you can imitate the Quran. They could not even do this. They couldn't do 10. And so Allah reduced the challenge again. From the entire Quran to 10 surahs, Allah then reduced it again. And he issued the ultimatum. And this is the final of the five verses revealed. The final of the five verses is found in Surah Al-Baqarah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِن كُنْتُمْ فِي رَيْبٍ مِمَّا نَزَّلْنَا عَلَىٰ عَبْدِنَا فَأْتُوا بِسُورَةٍ مِّن مِثْلِهِ If you are in doubt as to what we have revealed to our servant, then only bring one surah. فَأْتُوا بِسُورَةٍ مِّن مِثْلِهِ 
Bring only one surah like it, not a whole Quran, not 10. Allah reduced the challenge. And notice this is a further indication of the miraculous nature of the Quran. The challenge is issued high. Bring forth the whole Quran, they cannot do it. So Allah lowers it. Bring forth 10 surahs, they cannot do it. Allah lowers it even more. Bring forth only one surah. And then Allah gives the ultimatum. Allah gives the ultimatum. Allah says, call whomever you want. And then Allah says, فَإِن لَمْ تَفْعَلُوا وَلَن تَفْعَلُوا وَلَن تَفْعَلُوا is the ultimatum. It is another miracle because it's a prediction. Allah says, but if you cannot do it, and then there is a phrase that is put in brackets in English, and of a surety, you will never be able to do it. If you cannot do it is a clause, it's a condition. But then there is a prediction. You will never be able to do it until the end of times. You will not do it. If you cannot do it and you will never be able to do it, then be prepared to face the punishment of Allah, a fire whose fuel are stones and men. Now, this ultimatum to produce a surah similar to the Quran, it is a standing ultimatum. It is an ultimatum that is in existence right now. Up until this time, we are allowed to issue the same challenge, not just to our opponent, not just to our debater, to all of mankind. And we challenge mankind and we say, O oh mankind who have disbelieved in the Quran, come together all of you, all of your scientists and your computers and your program managers, come together, all of you. Write computer code, see if you can do it. Do whatever you want, bring your poets. Bring your Nobel laureates of the Arabic language. Do whatever you want and bring forth, not the whole Quran, not even 10 surahs. Bring forth one surah like the Quran, if you are truthful in your claim that the Quran is not from God. So this is a standing challenge. It is a challenge in effect up until our times. Now, the question that arises is, what is the status of the Quran's miracle vis-a-vis -vis the other miracles that the Prophet ﷺ was given? The Prophet ﷺ was given many miracles. We know he was given so many miracles. Of the miracles that he was given was the fact that he split the moon in half. The day of judgment has come close and the moon has been split in half. This is a miracle. He pointed to the moon when the Quraysh challenged him to split it in half. And the moon split in half in front of their eyes. Of his miracles was that on numerous occasions, numerous occasions, eyewitness accounts, he took a small quantity of food and he caused it to suffice for hundreds, sometimes thousands. In the battle of the trench, one glass of milk was drunk by over 1500 companions to their fill, each one drinking to his fill. More than 1,500 people drank from one cup of milk and all of the people reported this. In the battle of Hudaybiyah, in the battle of Hudaybiyah, one canister of water sufficed the entire army of 1,400 people, not just to drink, but to do wudu. They did wudu and they drank from one canister of water. On so many occasions, small quantities of food in the battle of Tabuk, a few dates, a few pieces of bread were brought in front of the Prophet He was told this is all the whole army has. That's all it has. So he dipped his hands in it and he prayed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that one plate of food sufficed for the entire army of Tabuk. This is a living miracle. People saw it, people reported it. And there are many more besides these. We don't have time for all of that. The question is though, what is the relative status of the miracle of the Quran vis-a-vis -vis the other miracles that he was given? And the response, the Quran is the ultimate miracle of our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It is such a miracle that all the other miracles are considered trivial and inconsequential compared to the Quran. In comparison to the Quran, all of the other miracles become inconsequential. 